Michael Kamal, I'm Director of Content for T3 Live. I'm here with my best friend in the world, Scott Redler. It's SPX 5000 day. So a lot of people are in a good mood. We had that, you know, positive revision to, to the CPI. So small caps are rocking, semi caps, uh, sorry, semis are up big, risk assets are up big. We're going to go through the disclosures really quick. But the big thing today is we're going to talk about the significance, if there is one, about S&P 5000. Scott's going to take you through how he finds some of his best swing trades. And we also have a special offer for you guys. Um, if you want to join Scott's Power Play service, it's just $99 today. If you want to join, $99 today only. T3Live.com slash power. You can see Scott is bringing out the special beverage. I forgot mine. But again, if you want to join Scott's service for the whole year for $99, go to T3Live.com slash power. And we will get to, we will talk a little bit about more. So guys, um, start off... Uh, Post in the comments where you dial in from. We're, we're getting a good crowd from around the world every week. So we just want to know where everybody's coming in from. So let us know in the comments. I'm in Brooklyn. Scott is in New Jersey. And we want to know just where everybody's coming in. So, Scott, while the comments are coming in, let's talk about something that you bring up a lot, which is um, the risks of not being in the yeah. stock market. Because, you know, we're SPX 5,000 and at 4,000, 3,000, 2,000, 1,000, People were giving us reasons not to be in the stock market. So can you talk us a little, and I know this is a topic that gets the red dog fired up, but mm -hmm. can you talk about the significance of this milestone? By the way, just in full disclosure, I, I got to bring my energy back up. You know, I just will tell you the honest truth. I was just actually watching online a funeral and I, and I want to bring anyone down at S&P 5000, but um, you know, just uh, something happened this, this uh, week where a good friend of mine from back in the day, you know, she committed suicide and uh, she suffered from depression. Depression is real. So one of my mantras, it's nice to be nice because you never know what anyone's going through. So this 51 woman has two daughters and a husband and friends everywhere. And meanwhile, she thought that was her her answer. So anyway, you know, we are here and I just got off that about 20 minutes ago. I'm trying to get myself back up to, to you know, you always want to figure out what matters, right? What matters in life, what matters to you. And, um, you know, at this point, S&P 5000 does matter. It should matter to you. It should matter to your financial being. It should matter to your family. It should matter to, you know, how you conduct yourself. Because if you're working um, in a job, hopefully your employer matches your 401k and you've been doing it for 20 years and you've been sacrificing for the future. Um, maybe, you know, you have a, a, a daughter or a son or, or a child. That might go to college, so that could help. So S and P five thousand means um, and confirms that over time the bull market wins. And yes, you do have drawdowns. You have, um, you know, I, I started trading in nineteen ninety eight. I had the Nasdaq bubble burst <laughs> in two thousand. Nasdaq five thousand to one thousand. It happened, and a lot of people left the business. Then the financial crisis two thousand seven two thousand eight. I traded through that. I post pictures of me and Mark Haynes and. You know, and um, Bob Pisani and Aaron Burnett and the crew. And uh, I learned from NASDAQ 2000, you know, in the financial crisis and then the pandemic when, you know, people thought the world would end again. And chances are the world usually doesn't end. So to stick to a long term plan, you know, is very, very important. It's not easy. Everyone thinks, oh, it's, you know, there's no hats right now. We used to have like the Dow 10,000 hat, 20,000 hat, or SP 3000. You know, it feels like there's no celebrating. I don't know why not everyone celebrates. You know, if you stayed the course, celebrate. You know, take a little beverage right now. Cheers to you. Cheers to life. Cheers to figuring stuff out because it's not easy at times. And it's not anyone's fault. You know, there are some things just people just can't help. You know, whether it's cancer and mental illness, it's, you know, they're, they're both diseases. But anyway, um, just kind of uh, just, you know, be happy. You know, you say the question, you go to sensationalism sells. Okay. The worst headlines in the world about how the world's going to end sells, not, you know, being a moderate in the middle, staying the course, putting monthly flows, living your life, being a good person in your community, giving back to the, your friends, your family, you know, dealing with stuff. And um, so celebrate right now that if you're here and you're listening to this and you're, you're in a good spot, you know, the journey is, is treating you well. And it's not going to always treat you well. And the SP is not always going to be on a on a, a upward course above the eight and twenty one day. We're gonna have ten percent drawdowns, fifteen percent drawdowns, maybe even twenty percent drawdowns. That's what's happened in the past since 
2018 and before that. Stay the course. Put your monthly flows in. Take advantage of your or take or just stay involved for your financial future for your child's college. And, and if you trade for a living, which is a whole nother thing, which is what I do, and you have to really friggin' massage the head and keep your feed the brain and do everything you need to do so you can execute on your you know X's and O's. It's that's a whole nother thing. And none of it's easy, but it could be done. Just gotta figure out how you want to do it. And um cheers to um February 9th, 2024. We're all here. You never know when you're not gonna be here and just you know be in the present every day so you can enjoy yourself and um you know make progress. It's not perfection. It's all progress. Yeah, I think um, if you have time to be sitting down for some like stock market entertainment on Friday afternoons, then you probably have some things to be thankful for. So, you know, yeah, so we have people. Let's take a look at um, the crowd up there. Of course, it's is here. It's keeps telling us he can't see cut. He can't comment. But for some reason, he's commenting all the time. He's in Ridgefield, Connecticut. We have Toronto represented. We have Miami. Um, Ultra Maga Dave, another super fan. He's in he's in Rio Grande, New Jersey, which I never heard of. North Carolina. Um, yeah, Hugh is in sunny Arizona. So yeah, so Scott, so why don't you walk us through? I guess the the current picture. What do you see? What you see in the market now? We have Tracy from South Dakota. Oh, it's great seeing everybody like come in and and talk. Some of you guys, I feel like I I've met some of you. I haven't met some of you, but. You know, the, the beauty of social media at times, because sometimes social media can be toxic, is having friends around the world, like minds that like to think together, that 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 try and look out for each other, well, whether it's trying to give ideas or ways to go about things or when bad things happen, which it does. You know, we all try and just be there, you know, and that's what it's all about is being there. If you want to look, you know, a little X's and O's, this is the S&P, uh, you know, daily chart. And... Um, there, there have been times during this active sequence of this year where, it, you know, it's kind of got tested, right? I talk about the 821 day. I don't know how many times that um, Mike has put out there my ebook about you want to be long in a portfolio approach if you trade for a living when the S&P is above the 821 day. And today we hit 5,024. And um, there's been a lot to do. And it's not easy staying the course. But at least if you have some kind of, um, some kind of system you know, like this, like, you know, th there's been a bunch of days that they tested the market and one of them being Fed Day. And I remember ranting about, does this mean anything? Does this mean anything? And it did not. OK. And then now all of a sudden, you know, we've had another I don't know how many days it's been since that Wednesday Fed Day, but actually it's probably about a week and a half of good action that have been fighting it because that day it felt like it might have been over actively in 2024. Well, you had to adjust and the market actively trading for living is all about adjusting. If I'm going to go to the, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to go to the, the monthly chart. You know, this is the monthly chart of the S and P, you know, I'm not even going to show this. This is, <laughs> this is, this is the life of the market that I've lived. You know, I'm 51 years old. Um, I remember, you know, when I started, I remember this decade, this decade, the decade of pain, the decade that the media said, Hey, Stock market doesn't work. Stock market isn't meant for the average person. Stock market, blah, 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 whatever the freak they said. Bottom line is, if you remember, you had the roaring 80s and the go-go 90s, which were the two best decades of the market. Well, I was growing up. <clears throat> I was in high school and college. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then, um, just so you know, as bad as the financial... <clears throat> I need a sip of this high noon. Yeah, Scott, please hydrate. We need to um, keep 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 you in good shape. I'll, I had I'll tears be... today. I lost some tears. I, I freaking lost tears today. Um, you know, all right. All right, well, Red Dog's not a crybaby, but I right, was We crying. have another uh, super fan, Cobblestone, says hi. He's been here every week, so hi to you, Mr. Cobblestone. What up, Cobblestone? You know, it's a Dave Portnoy drink. We'll get to him later. Anyway, this was the financial. This was, I remember, this was your decade that had to consolidate the roaring 80s and the go-go 90s. This was the financial crisis where some people say, hey, Red Dog, when is your wife blood in the street account built? Well, it started here in 2006. She put in month money every single month during uh, the financial crisis, but she didn't, didn't know any better. She was like 28 years old working at UMDNJ in Newark, New Jersey. And then all of a sudden, you, know, you took this out and boom, another new move. And then you want to take a closer look. This was the, this was the pandemic you know, of, of 2020. It looks like a blurb. 
But uh, that's when people are coming to me saying, hey, Red Dog, I know you've been in you know, the financial crisis. You went through the tech bubble burst. And what do we do? I'm like, well, this was the worst crisis I've ever seen. You know, you had you had real estate crisis. You had mortgages. You have you had things. Banks blow up. Like, this was this was a crazy crisis. There was you go to Florida. There was freaking foreclosures everywhere. You know, so this I was like, you know what? This lasted uh, to 2009. By 2012, five years later, we're at all time highs. I'm like, even if you try and time this, you might be in trouble. And P.S. You know, we came in and had another move, and then this was uh, this was your uh, peak in 2021. Had another move lower, and now here we are <laughs> at highs. Historic. You could have done the. You could look at a chart from 1929, which was the you know the the major depression, right? The Wall Street crash or 1987. How many of you guys have heard? Stories about the 1987 crash. If you would have bought stock the day before any of these things and stayed the course, you're going to make money over time. If you trade for a living, you just got to make sure you have a disciplined process and a plan and you don't blow up. And at this point, we took out 4,800, which was the, the semi double top. And, um, you know, we'll see what we'll see what happens. You know, we're a little extended from the eighth day on the monthly. You go to the weekly, weekly also. Wow, look at that. You know, we took out this 4818. Um, and uh, a lot of candles in a row. This is when basically this descending trend line, which was a, a bit of a correction from the summer all the way down to October. This candle, look at the size of this potent candle. This candle is the candle that launched all the bulls, and we've been doing it since. This gave a small chance that, hey, maybe the active bears could be back on a weekly basis. And then this candle said, uh-uh, it engulfed the prior one, and that's where we are. So until we have an engulfing candle, that, that pushes back and 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 overpowers a, a few days in a week and it doesn't bounce back and retrace it. We got to try and stay the course because right now there's been a lot of money out there in trading and the ones that are the most frustrated are the ones that are fighting it. And you don't want to fall asleep behind the wheel, but you also do not want to fight a trend. It's the worst feeling in the world. When you're involved in a pain trade, I never make fun of people in pain trades because I've been in one or a few of them in the course of my career. It's not fun. It's one thing about selling something early. It's another thing about switching short and being stubborn and losing money, wishing for bad news. Same thing on the downside. You start correcting, you know, hoping and praying. Hoping and praying does not happen in trading. doesn't make you any money, hoping and praying. It just doesn't. It's looking at your position, seeing how you need to navigate them based on your time frame and making adjustments and putting yourself in control. Hoping and praying doesn't put you in control. And uh, let's go back to the daily real quickly before Michael says I spoke too much which I probably did. Uh, I am rambling a little bit. You know, this was the low that started in October. And uh, literally, we've been in this active sequence to the upside. And anyone who tells you where we're going to go is a guess. At some, listen, we're, we're extended from the eighth day, and we've been coming back to it. So do you want to start new, fresh longs and, 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 you know, and chase? No. It, you need the right setup, but doesn't mean, again, it's an easy short, which is a saying that we say every now and then. Okay. I, I would never say Scott talks too much. That's just, <laughs> that's just crazy talk. So, so guys, l l let, let us know in the audience where you're watching from, because it seems like. Cheers, Tony. Yes. Che cheers to Tony. It seems like we're getting a lot, lot more people on YouTube lately. So let us know where you're watching us from and where, you, <laughs> where you would prefer. Do you, do you like Twitter better than YouTube? Do you like YouTube better than Facebook? Let us know in the comments. So Scott, um, before we get through to some of like the, the recent wins like Lily and MDB, um, could you talk a little bit, I guess, about um, very quickly, the, like two of the, the big names this week, again, NVIDIA and SMCI, because they're going, you know, crazy all over again. Well, to be honest, I don't think, I feel like these names didn't really lead this week, but they, they proved that, that strong stocks can go higher. The first time Mike and I did this, we're going to do it every day. So there's no there's no 6:30 clubs on Fridays. So what we do now on, on Fridays is this 2:30, you know, week in, you know week in, in review, and then the week ahead. So we talk about things that worked, things that we made mistakes with, so we can learn, and then things to look forward to, so we can be prepared to make money moving forward. Um, so the first one we did was right here. If you do remember, Mike. You know, we were we were talking about NVIDIA and people busting my horn saying, you know, why are you so bullish on NVIDIA? You know, and I'm like, well, it's been in a six month channel. Their, their valuation is going down. They've had a few good quarters and it's been taking time to digest this last big gap and gets above here. 
And P.S. This is where we are. And uh, at this point, <laughs> we're at new highs. So, you know, you, we're trending. Again, eight-day moving average. Oh, is that? Oh, look at that. That was from our, our uh, 2024 report. Every December, I come out with a report where I go over 12 to 15 themes or things that I'm going to be focusing on that could work. And then when, it, when the market confirms them, I, trend, I tend to try and get there. So this was NVIDIA, you know. It's not yeah, about so calls. Yeah, so I, I didn't mean to hijack the screen. I, I was actually just getting it ready. But yeah, just so you know, Scott's not just late to the party on NVIDIA. It was one of his top picks for 2024 in his market outlook report. So Scott, I apologize for, for hijacking the charts. No, no it's okay, because listen, that's important, because that was written in December. What usually friggin' hurts right here is when I put that out there in December, and if I happen to not make as much as I think I should make in a situation like that, and I probably didn't. It was a nice trade. I made good money. I had options when it started. I, I stayed with it. I bought some dips. I haven't been fighting it. But again, you look back at this and psychologically, you're like, holy cow, how much did I have here? How much did I have here? And, and now all of a sudden, here we are at a, a new move high. Okay. So psychologically. Okay, Scott, we go. Okay, Scott's going to punch me in the face for what I'm about to say. I'll never punch you in the face. Scott, do you remember the other semiconductor name in the 2024 market outlook report? In hint, it has it's the same word as a part of the body. Same word. Oh, arm. Arm, arm, arm was in the, Sc Scott's yeah. gonna punch me. I totally forgot this was in the 2024 market outlook report. So Scott yeah, actually- no, I, I didn't forget that it was. It was, I'll go to arm. Arm, I actually um, was trading awesome. Arm. You know, he had an IPO and everyone was talking about how it was overvalued and it, and it was PE wise. But we talk about the first year of a life of a stock. It's not about your valuation, about the story and it's about supply and demand. And if you could chew through the supply and demand the same way as the art of the first day of an IPO, which we go over. Sometimes you have these overhyped IPOs and they come out after 10 different time valuation increases and they get, you know, sold that day. And it takes months to, you know, kind of get itself together. And then there's times when it just goes. Bottom line is right here, I remember this candle. This candle is November 20th. You know, we put it as a buy at 56. Then it had a nice another channel, went well. And and then a lot of guys from the Alpha team actually took options into this. And and then I got to say, Chilo was freaking ma a maniac today. He was buying this. You could go over it, you know, at 102, 103, 104. I'm sure he's a little upset at himself. It's a 117. I think he bought it at. 105 and sold it at 109, but that's a trade. You made four points. You made a few thousand dollars. That's a trade. But P.S. Yeah, this was you know a lot of times in the last 15 years. I hate to say it, people like Red Dog. If you just put your entire trading account into your 12 ideas you put out for the last 10, 12 years in your report that you put out every time in December, you'd make a, a sugar honey iced tea a lot more money. I'm like, you want to okay. talk about my dead squirrel? I did okay, have a Scott, squirrel. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to hijack the screen um, one Again? more time because we can actually show all the, all the picks from okay. the 2024. Let's show outcomes. all the picks because people think sometimes we, we focus on the winners, not the losers, and this and that. Yeah. So this is so this um, was the report, right? Yeah. So th this is all, this is all the names. So there's ARM, there's Nvidia, MSOS, Amazon, BHVN, Bitcoin, Toast, Path. XBI, Apple, Gold, Morgan Stanley, Square, BBIO, and Rivian. So you can see Scott's done well this year. Actually, the 2023 market outlook report was the best one of all time by far. And this one, would this one might be even better. So yeah, so this is the full record, all the picks Scott made at the end of the year. Um, Wait, could you so keep it there for a second? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it's like, what have you done for me lately, honey? Right? It's February 9th. I still think Apple's gonna work. Okay. I still think gold is going to work. Morgan Stanley at some point will be, you know, higher than where it is here in the next three to six months. I think the same thing for Square. Um, Rivian, I think, just bottomed this week. And uh, BBIO was a, the, probably one of the biggest winners we had last year. And it's taking its time to reevaluate. From here, okay, um, Amazon. You know, just had the gap and go, and it's been great. We've made a lot of money. This is my biggest winner today. MSOS, I've been in the shares and, and the options since December. I'm the smallest that I've been in a while. I still think maybe you can go to 13, 14, but we'll see. NVIDIA, I have nothing right now. I was longer, I was long earlier today, and I didn't stay with it. I actually made money shorting calls yesterday. Bitcoin, on Wednesday, we came out, and remember when I'm like, hey, we have a pocket pivot. Bitcoin's going to clear 44,000. So 
you know, toast I haven't touched since um, since something happened with that stock in the end of December, January. Path also, the, both of those weren't trading well. But anyway, you know, these we put out as ideas because not everybody could trade as active as we can for a living. Some guys are doctors, lawyers, firemen, policemen, um, sanitation workers, whatever it is. Whatever it is you do, like, we just want your thoughts, Red Dog, because we need to allocate money every year based on a, whether it's an IRA or Roth IRA. I, I suggest you just put money in, in a 401k and every single month go to an S&P, you know, correlated fund. So this way you don't have to think about these things. But a lot of people like to pick winners. So like Red Dog, we're just going to put whatever percentage in all of these things and it usually works out. But I trade them actively because I need to worry about the, the date of the month, the date of the quarter, because I get paid quarterly. Most traders get paid monthly. So this type of thing is hard for a trader that trades monthly to get paid because you have to time it. We're market timers. If you're a market timer, you got to time the market with the process. If you're getting paid monthly and quarterly, if you trade for additional cash flow on top of your job, then you may not have to time things as perfect. That's cool. And if you also just want to uh, see what's, you know, the, the, what the narrative is and what, where the pressure points and the trigger points are, we do that for you also. There's all different ways to do it. You know, that's why I'm up every day at literally, you know, 4.30, 4.40 in the morning and working all day long to try and connect the dots for every different time frame. And I try and do it. And, you know, I'm, I'm, we're human. We're not always perfect, but we have a system where when we're wrong, we don't get louder. We stop ourselves out when we're right. We try and take as much out of a trade, but sometimes you can't take the whole move. You take pieces of it. If you take pieces of it, you're always going to let money in. And in here, I've been taking pieces out of a lot of these trades. I, I I don't put, we probably should put one account, allocate like $5 million and put them in every play and let people monitor that. But you know what? I'm not the I'm not the CEO of T3 Live. They got to make that decision. I'm just the chief strategic officer that comes up with all this stuff and Mike makes me look good. Okay. Um, okay, so we have, we have some more people coming in. So we have Juan from Paraguay. So yeah, right. always good to see people coming in from around the world. Okay, Scott, so l let's go through some of your, um, I would say, like the best picks you've made this year. And I think we should start with um, MongoDB, ticker MDB for everybody. That was just added to Power Plays this week. And that was a fast mover. Well, a lot of people, I think what's more important than what I chose, it's the question is why I chose it. And, and MDB, you know, I think I chose, I, I traded it here and it didn't work. That was in November, right? I thought maybe it would go after having uh, this type of base and it didn't. And then all of a sudden, software, SaaS, cybersecurity, every, everyone's been looking for the next big mover and this was trading really well. So I bought um, a 440 by 465 call spread. Um, I think I paid $5 to make 20. Not so bad. And I feel like a jerk right now because I said 505. I could have done a much bigger call spread, but it is what it is. But I picked it because I had a six month consolidation. It triggered above the moving averages. We were talking about this, I think, last week in this video. Like by watching this video, you can make yourself money because we go over things. And if you write them down and you take accountability, push your keys, there are things that we talk about in here that are real life stuff in the market that, that are shaping up and maybe not ready or getting ready. And this is what we do. Okay. And we were here last Friday. Was it February 2nd last Friday? February 2nd was last Friday. We were here talking about this. And I said, I put on a call spread and people are like, Oh, I like that. It's not really ready to go. I'm like, well, I think it's going to take out 443. And for two days it played with it and it wasn't great. And if you bought too high and you had too many shares and you, you know, you screwed up your process, you didn't make money. Then finally it went above 455. And now it's at 500 and change. So how did you play that? Some guys are like, oh, I lost money. I bought too much on this day and I never went back to it. That happens in trading. Some did options like I did and then waited for it to finally clear 455 and did options in stock and they're getting really paid. Right now it's a little extended from the moving average. So I'd be very careful buying it up here. <clears throat> but bottom line is six months of sideways action, really good chart pattern. Triggered above this little consolidation, above the eight there. I went long options. I actually traded them a bunch back and forth. And then finally, now my my uh, call spread is going to be maximized. But the reason why I did it, because of the chart pattern. I, I, I'm not an expert in the sector, 
but I knew this sector was starting to act better. You had snow, you had a bunch of other things acting well, and this went and wound up being a great play for everyone in the community. So cheers to you if you took it, you made the trade your own, and you know hopefully it was a great trade for you for the week. And if you didn't make as much as you thought, get over it. There are so many more trades that are going to happen this year. Okay, and guys, we're going to get in a little while. We're going to give you a way to get a lot 52 new trades from Scott for the next year. So, Scott, how why don't we go over um, Eli Lilly? Lilly was like first day of the year. That was like the first power play of the year. Scott's like these weight loss drugs are big. The chart looks good. So, show us the, the story hate of Lilly. <laughs> well, here's the chart of Lilly. Do you have the power play that we sent out then to I, show them? I, I, I will pull it up. Or you go look for that. So, again, I remember this name. It had a big move. I never played it before. And then it, it turned into like this consolidation for two months. And then to start the year, this candle happened. This was uh, 587. And this was when the market was in a corrective phase. Remember the first week of the year, tech stocks, a lot of things came in. And this ignited on January 2nd. So Mike is like, we need a power play. I'm like, well, Lily, you know, chances are it can go again. I think this is a good power play. I'm long it. I like it. And uh, this was the power play. What day was that? This was January 2nd. You could see here 586.73 is when Scott gave it to our power plays friends. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. And I, I, I should have just bought 5,000 shares and stayed with it the whole time. And then it wouldn't have to be friggin', um, you know, doing my thing every day, waking up and going in the sauna and the ice brow. No, I'm kidding. What would I do? But uh, again, that's the demons we all have. Is like, what did you do? How long did you hold it? How much did you take out of the trade? These are questions. So from here, I had actually a quick move through 630. That was the prior pivot. Gave you a little red dog reversal. And someone's like, all right, red dog, is just sit, red dog reversal. I'm like, well, from 587 to 636, chances are it's not the end of the world. It just means you use your cheer system and get lighter. And then here's another little micro red dog reversal. And then I remember this pivot at 647. And P.S., there you are. Great trade. Great, you know, story, chart, good action, showed relative strength. There you go. And I told you guys a story about my friend, my friend who I coached lacrosse with, has a daughter named Lily. <laughs> She's 10 years old. She, he bought a thousand shares of Lily just because it was her name. That's how funny the stock market is sometimes. So you go to here. Um, so Lily's in uh, seventh grade. So um, <laughs> way back, I don't know exactly know when her birthday was, but I think it was even down here. Right, she's in seventh grade. So what's the date of birth when she's in seventh grade? She would be like 13. Okay, so 13 years ago is when? That's uh, we're 2000. 2010. 2010. So she, so he, 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 yeah, he said his cost basis is like 25. And the funniest thing is because he's not a trader, he's just kept it and doesn't want to pay taxes. And because traders, we know we take trades, we're looking at our PL, we want to get paid monthly and quarterly PS. He's still in it. His name is Eugene. He's the best barbecue guy in Short Hills. I'll give him that credit because I'm number two. I was always number one, but he's got more time in his hands because he bought so much Lily. He's just barbecuing and looking at TikTok recipes. No, I'm kidding. But anyway, I even said, he's like, what do I do now? Because they sold out. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, like I I'm not going to tell you what to do with, with this at this point. All I know is, thank goodness you didn't name your daughter Pfizer. <laughs> Because it's a lot different story with Pfizer. If, if you want to look at Pfizer, you know, just, <laughs> woo, you know, or Penelope, you know, oh, name her Penelope and all of a sudden buy Pfizer. Instead, named, named her Eli Lilly, you know, Lilly and what Eli Lilly. But anyway, it's just so funny. Same way you go to a horse race, you're like, I want to pick this horse, you know, Super Sally, because, you know, your cousin is Sally and you think she's cute. Or anyway, um, sometimes it happens in the stock market, stupid stuff. And, and uh, actually, this looks like a little bit of a double bottom on the weekly. If you look at the guys are just punched it up. And it does have a descending trend line. But P.S., <laughs> the, the place to be has been Lily. And uh, it wound up giving another great trade this year for our power plays. It was the first power play of the year because of this candle right here. It broke the descending trend line. I was long it, I remember, overnight and gave you a gap and go. And... These are the type of things I try and find for the power plays. It's not clear. I just want to try and find things. Like sometimes Mike's like, do you have any power plays? I'm like, well, blah, blah. he's like, do you think it's higher in the next three weeks? I'm like, yeah, okay. That's all people want. They want to be in something that's going to be higher within one to three weeks. So on, on Friday of last week, I'm like, MDB, I think, could be higher in the next one to three weeks. 
and it was a power play. So anyway, you know, that, that, that's what we're trying to do with power plays. It's different than the alpha team that trades for a living or rather all access, because a lot of people don't want to think about it. If this, then that, if that, then this, get above, stay above, get below and stay below. These are all things we have to do as traders. They want to be like, tell me what to buy. Give me a stop. Tell me where it can go. And I want to go back to my day. That's what power plays are. Yeah, guys. So a little behind the scenes, we actually Scott actually created power plays because so interesting. The number one reason people cancel um, the Alpha Team VTF or the Red Law Report newsletter is is liter is because it's not because I lost money or I hate Scott or or anything like that. It's, it's usually it's usually I don't have time. So we created power plays literally for all the people that just said I don't have time. So Scott, why don't we now? Now we know not everything is a picture perfect grand slam home run so scott why don't you bring up gld because so gld is actually a current power play that's definitely going slower than we had hoped right whoops i bumped scott up the screen there so why don't we uh yeah, go, go. yeah so there this we go. Is the GLD. so th this is the gld weekly you know i thought right around here would be breaking 193 and you could see 205 so I'm like, this could be a great power play and it's still just hanging around doing a whole lot of nothing it's not falling apart but it's not a great power play then you go to the monthly chart. Everyone's talking about this cup and handle pattern, which is true. You have a cup, you have a long channel, you have a handle. Sometimes the channel goes for three months, six months, 10 months, more. And this is still just hanging around here. So this was a power play that hasn't worked yet, but it hasn't given you any pain. It just hasn't triggered above this 194.45. So, and, and it didn't really negate this. I would say like, if this were to break below one, you know, 83 ish, then all of a sudden it could go to 179. It can go to here. It can go to there. And it's not really a power play anymore. Hanging in the top third of an overall channel, waiting to get through 124.45 is a power play. So sometimes the power comes fast. And sometimes, as long as it doesn't lose you or the trade changes, it takes more time. And gold is taking time. I've lost money trying to buy options too quickly. My, my next option play, I think, comes in for March now. It'd be nice. It'd be nice if it does, but hasn't done it yet. So, but it's not hurting a power play participant. It's just not paying you yet. So sometimes a power play is something that should not go lower and trade and the change trade. Sometimes they happen fast and sometimes they don't. That makes sense. Makes perfect sense. Um, okay, so Scott, why don't we go over one more before we show our magical? Can I grab one more of these. We we can we can drink. We Scott, we can drink all, all day and all night here with you. That, that that's the whole you point. Can't, of this. I got to go out tonight. I have like five com couples going out for dinner, so I can't be. But uh, today was a tough day, mentally, physically, but good. Anyway. Okay, so Scott, why don't we go over M Microsoft? So Microsoft came in on December twentieth. So all right, so Scott has fled the building. So while Scott is um, disappearing, let's go over our special offer. So again, guys, I had to leave my sauna and go get a high noon for my little my my pandemic refrigerator that I had during the in short holes. Yeah. Okay, guys. So today only, you can get only today. Never again. <laughs> never again with an asterisk. Um, <laughs> you can you can get a whole year of power play service, an entire year for ninety nine dollars. The regular Ooh. price is two ninety nine. So you get Scott's favorite ID each week. You get a weekly roundup every Friday. You get email updates when it's time to switch gears. And when, when Scott's in a giving mood, he throws out bonus options ideas, which he did earlier this week on, on ticker ON ON. So again, the regular price is $2.99. But today I'm betting my whole career on it. I'm kidding. Yeah. We we, we need joke. we need this ninety nine dollars because we we need to restock the fridge over there in Short Hills. So guys, no, that was a joke room? with the ON ON, right? Oh. Okay, guys, again, t3live.com slash power, t3live.com slash power, and it's an entire year. So, yes, On The Labs is saying that's way too cheap. Is Scott drinking? Yes, Scott is drinking, and it is too cheap. Because, listen, a lot of our service, a lot of T3 services are expensive. So, like, the Alpha Team is $2,000 a year. The Redler Report is $12.95 a year. And those are sort of high-octane, very busy services. But power plays, it's just $99 for, for your first year. So go to t3live.com 
slash power. And Scott, you see the background? We, we are in the Greek islands today. Oh, yeah. Uh, on the show. Yeah. So guys, I, think guys- you, I might go there this summer. Actually, I, I chose, you know, I have a son who's a freshman in, in high school and, and, uh, he, you know, we can't go away anymore because he plays varsity basketball and varsity lacrosse, which is great, but you're not allowed to leave on vacation. So we decided until before he leaves for college, we're going to go on a trip every summer. Last summer we went to Spain, Marco, if you're watching, he showed us around. It was awesome. Year before that was Italy. And I think we're going to Greece this year or Iceland. I'm not sure. But do things with your family when you have time because when your kids are gone, it's too late. It's a little, little food for thought. And then watching, and then especially what I said before with what happened today with my friend from the past. You know, so enjoy yourself and enjoy life. You work hard enough. You know what I'm saying? So smell the roses when you can. Where are we? So have you ever been there in Greece, Mikey? I I went to Greece when I was 23 and it was um, by far the best trip of my life. By the way, um, if you are a single male, Greece is the best place on the planet to go. (laughs) Are you you running the dating service now? No, um, I will will say this. Um, Scott, is it okay if I get a little politically incorrect on this? You can do whatever. I'll tell you all the places that are great if you're single too. Okay, so in Greece, there are tons of very, very, very good looking men and women. A lot of the men do not like women there. So oh, there is no greater ratio on the planet than in Greece, than in the Greek islands. Plus it's absolutely beautiful. The food, it's the best food I've ever had in my life. Um, so I cannot recommend, especially if you are a single man, go to Greece, you will, you will have the best time of your entire life. Well, do, do men approach you there, or there's just a lot of women there? Like, we're, we're, we can't even talk about this. Yeah, yeah, we can't. We, we have to. Th- this is rated PG, so we have to keep this clean. Yes, yes dating dating advice is included in the ninety nine dollars. The Ma- I love the Amalfi Coast, by the way. It's, that was my favorite place. I went with Chase. I went with um, my wife. My wife. And um, listen, you want you if you want to test yourself, go to the Amalfi Coast. Go to Positano, or uh, and. Um, and do the the walk of the gods. When you're on the walk of the gods, okay, you're up top of this frigging crazy trail, going over the perimeter. And if you really don't like your wife, you just gotta go like this, and she'll fall down, and you can collect your life insurance. And it's a bad thing to do. So if you don't do that, you know you really love your wife or your husband because that's your chance. <laughs> Path of the gods in Italy, up top. If you've ever been there, you know what I'm talking about. So. We survived the path of the gods. That means I'm going to be married. It's like, it's like when the groundhog doesn't see its shadow. If it's, you can pass the test right there. <laughs> anyway, let's move on back to stocks. Let's yeah, go to all right away. Let's look at this little, this little uh, breakout out of the wedge pattern that we've had, that we're experiencing right now. So O N O N, I talked to you guys about. Uh, Chase actually has had three, four pair of them. So the high school kids like the on cloud sneakers. I had a bunch of pairs I used to wear with jeans. And then I started wearing the hokas. And then these came out. They're like a, an inch and a half off the ground. These are awesome. And I just, you know, figure it just seems like a lot of people love this. So besides the potential sales going up and the taking over some Nike, Adidas, this and that. And I have a few fundamental guys. I love it. I was like, it's a great timing spot. So I bought uh, right in here. I bought stock and options and, you know, earnings aren't out till um, March 19th. It's only February 9th. So There's a lot of time. So what's going to happen is I'm going to use my day count rules like I always do. You buy, you add, you trim a little bit, and then you hold. I do think you can get towards this gap pre-earnings, which is about three weeks. So we'll see how it goes. Um, if it goes a little bit more, I might reach out to my friend. <laughs> Not my friend. Yeah. Did you guys see what happened with Portnoy? He, he uh, you know, he's he's had some of not the greatest of plays, you know, in the last uh, week or so. But anyway, he's out there, you know, the Super Bowl making a hundred thousand dollars a hand playing blackjack. Did you see that video? That was kind of cool. But anyway, he's like he he got involved also. He's like Redler, you're basing your entire reputation on this play. I'm like I don't swing for home runs. You know, I'm in like right now seven, eight, nine plays. I'm massaging them. You know, I just try and get calculated situations that I think. We could measure our risk that have potential to make us money. And I do think this is one of them. And if it gets up towards 32, 
come earnings, then I'll turn my calls into a call spread and I'll trade the stock along the way. And as of right now, there seems like there's a void all the way up to here. So I still think there's room for ONON. And we put that out as a power play also because lots of things met above the moving averages, a catalyst, fundamental story. And, uh, you know, the actual the stock hasn't been out there for that long. If you go to the weekly chart, um, you know, this was a new issue uh, in 2021 and 22. And sometimes the best stocks come up from new names and this to me seems like something that could that, that that has has the benefit of the doubt to work so let's hope it works so this way you know i don't have an, an another enemy out there because i hate enemies i like to be friends with them red dogs dogs are friendly i'm a friendly guy i just don't like when people shit on people or in, you know anyway we'll get to that okay guys and yeah so um and this was the actual power plays alert that went out on 2784 27 the stock was at 2784 when we sent the alert we also gave and this is a good example of like a bonus options idea like scott gave the on at on on march 22nd 30 dollar calls to power play so those are probably i don't know how much they're up but they're up quite a bit those are up about 104 days the the, the okay. options are up 100 percent. the stock's up about five percent okay and so scott, just, so we, we just timed it freaking pretty perfectly to be honest yeah okay so guys so we did screw up we 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 are charging too little for power plays so um you show the wrong thing no no um no no we're, we're, we're good so guys again t3live.com slash power today only you get in for 99 dollars, and that's an entire year so minimum of 52 ideas you'll probably get about 60 because when Scott's in a good mood, sometimes it's like two or three ideas at a time, plus bonus options, ideas for fun. No, 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 no. I'm in a good mood when the market's acting well. I'm not, sometimes there's not a lot of power plays. Every time I'm miserable, Mike's like, you have any power plays? I'm like, I'm frigging, there's nothing yeah. working right now. There are no power plays. The s and is below the AIM 21 day. The Qs are below the AIM 21 day. Nothing's sticking for more than an hour. We're not putting out any power plays because there are no power plays. So we're only going to put out power plays when things are working where we can tell you what to do and it doesn't change the next day, which sometimes you're in a choppy market. Right now we've been trending and it's been really good. I feel like since November, we've had a lot of really good power plays. So if you, you know, the, so it, they've worked out well, same way with like the alpha team. I've had guys on the alpha team for 10 years and they know when things are good, we're going to make a lot of money when things are choppy or to the downside, we're not going to blow up, but, those times are not the easiest. Everyone gets a little upset and, you know, we start bickering and I try and keep it light, you know, there, the, the, you know, cause I don't want everyone to make, you know, there are times when people just banter and back and forth and get cynical. I, I don't like cynicism. I like value added. And with the power plays, some, you know, I, I don't know if there'll be 50 plays between now and the end of the year. There might be 10, there might be 30, but these plays are going to be plays that I think are A-plus plays that should be able to make you money. And if the trade changes, we'll let you know and you'll be out of it. And, and, we're, and that, that this is the, the, the product to tell you what to do versus me coming up every day with a plan to approach the market. Where there are some days you guys make more money than me. Some people made a lot more money than I did in, in NVIDIA from 505 to, to 717 or NDB from – you know, wherever it was to 500, which I'm fine with. That's me as the chief strategic officer. I am the chief, chief well, I could say it like five times fast. I'm the CSO and I'm also a trader. And I don't trade at all because sometimes I have to go to the city and be on Fox Business. Sometimes I have to be battling personalities. Sometimes I have to go watch my son's varsity game. I do a little bit of everything. But what I'm going to do is make sure that I put a lot of work into what I put out there. And if things change, I let you know. And if they don't, we try and ride it. And power plays is a very simple product, and I can't believe it's ninety nine dollars for the year. That's 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 very very cheap, because it really is. You know, our number one plays that that historically over time consistently work. And I'm never just going to put plays out there because oh we need plays because it's cheap enough that if we have five plays and you pay ninety nine dollars, you're not going to be upset. If we have fifty, great. Yeah, and guys. Um so we actually had an interesting year in 2020 because 2022, which was a crappy year for the market. There were not a lot of power plays that year. And it was just um, the sometimes the mission is stay out of trouble. I love that. Yes. And that, but, that is true. Like, so sometimes, yeah, sometimes the best advice you could possibly get is do nothing. 
because sometimes nothing works. But on average, it ends up being about a trade a week over the course of the year because when things are really hot, Scott might send three ideas in one day. So, yeah. but it basically averages out. But Monday and Tuesdays is when I bust Scott's chops. And, um, and well, the beauty of it is you, you know, you get to edit my note and you get to see my stuff and you see, like I say sometimes, if I'm in stock and I'm in options, that means I think something's going to work out and I won't have enough to really get paid. And if I'm in the stock and options, it means that it, it also triggered. So you're like, why is it not a power play? I'm like, I didn't have enough time to tell you. So thanks for, you know, looking at what I have on and let's put that on as a power play. Sometimes I'll have an option on and no stock. And they'll be like, is that a power play? I'm like, yeah, I kind of think it can happen, but the market didn't trigger yet. So I don't think it's a power play, you know, or vice versa. So he knows how to read me to figure out on whether or not it's something that we could put on that has a high percentage play of of winning and then sometimes we've added some stuff like sometimes we do options into a binary event he's like why are you in a call spread for this for the iw i'm like well you know da, 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 da. he's like let's do that well remember with amazon you know we had it on you know as a power play for stock but we don't take stock into earnings so he's like what do we do now i'm like well let's take it off and convert it to a call spread because i have that on and i think it's going to work so let's do it so why don't you show when we took Amazon off, if you could find it, and turned it into a call spread, because that was what the circumstances called for. We trade what the circumstances call for. We don't, you know, I remember when I used to be on the street.com with Kramer and some of those guys, we would do a video and it would like come out a week and a half later. I'm like, how do we just do a video with about gold and and it gets on there a week and a half later? I'm like, the, the, the world changes in the day. I don't I don't even write my note at night. Because I write it in the morning because I want to see what happened with Europe, with Asia, where the futures are, what the upgrades, the downgrades. I want it to be as real time as possible. So that is why I'm up every day so early. So this way we could take into account everything that happened. Because you could write this huge note that took you two hours the night before. And then the next day it means nothing because things happened around the world that changed everything. So let's see Google. Okay. Okay. So Scott, so I'm going to, so I'm going to show them very quickly. So this was Scott. Um, saying take off I mean, Amazon, Amazon to earnings. Sorry. And if you want exposure, you could look at the 165 by 170 call spread. And as far as like, and so um, Ultra Mega Dave is asking like what the alerts look like. So it's super simple. So, cause we literally, you, you can read the whole, you can get the alert and read it in 10 seconds and know if you want to do it or not. So this was on holdings, ticker O-N-O-N. This is the current price. Needs to hold 24 to 25.50. So that's where it gets in trouble. That's where you could switch gears. And Scott's thinking it can go to 31 to 33. And that's all you really need to know. And there's, a, and there's a quick explanation of the idea. And that's it. Because the whole point is Scott's spending. So Scott, how many charts do you look at in a week? Like 10 million? <laughs> Maybe 5 million, not 10. You're giving me too much credit. Yeah. Wait, what happened to the Amazon? Do you know I, I showed, we, we showed it already. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so... Let's look, yeah, actually look at the chart Amazon real quickly because this was actually pretty good. If you look at it, we had – well, I don't remember exactly when we put it on as a power play, but I, I think when we did put it on as a power play, it was uh, it was somewhere – this is Amazon. Where where do we put this on as a power play? I uh, will tell you right now. Uh, December 14th, 157.25. 157.25. So we put this on back here. So it's – and it took time too. Look at that. Like December, what did you say? December what? December 14th. So right here is when I thought it would break out. It broke out. But this wasn't enough to sell it. Came back in, never stopped us out. And then into the earnings here, which was still a nice play, 159 from where it was put on. I'm like, let's switch to uh, which I did. I had a 165 by 170 call spread, and that's what happened. So not only were you able to be in the stock. We don't want you to lose all your money by being wrong into an option play. We switch it into earnings, which is what I did also. Now today, this actually was my best trade this week. As you can see right now, it's it's near the highs of the day. And um, I was a buyer versus 167.34. I added today. The last day or two, I put on options. If you show the virtual trading floor, Michael, you'll see, you know, you can put that in there where I was, I'm in the stock and options. That means it's a power play, right? Stock and options. So, Mikey, put up the put up the word trading for a second, so they can see what that looks like too. Um, look how fast, uh, Mikey. Just... Three. 
two, one. All right. Well, let's let's not get carried away here, Mr. Scott. Uh, right, five, four, three, two. Anyway, you'll see on there that I'm in the stock and I was in the options and I've actually trimmed a little bit because I don't. I think I bought the options for a dollar, ten dollar twenty. Yeah, or people pair it back to that. Well, that's Dan talking. So if you go here, I'm in the I'm, I'm in Amazon stock. And if you look down, I'm in what you could go down the list. Yeah. Keep going, keep going. Oh, there yeah, it is. So, one, two, two halves. Yeah, for October 16th, which is next week. And next those week. those calls are up today. Let's see, 172.50. I put them on yesterday, I think, or two days ago even. Like in the space, I'm like, you know what? I might not add enough stock through 172.50. I want to make sure I'm in this power play. And uh, there you go. Okay, th those calls are up. 177 percent today so not bad scott not bad at all i should have given that to you know who <laughs> all right so uh listen this is the life of a trader you know you, you've seen real time what we do how we do it and um it's friday it's been a long week and um you know china there's a lot of personalities out there. A lot of guys are like, oh, we're going to see a 2 to 5% correction this week. The 80 lines are horrible. This is horrible. That's horrible. It's hard to drown out the noise. That's what we said in the beginning. You know, to have a long-term 401k or 403b or 529, everyone's always saying it's not going to end well. So sometimes you get two or three years of drawdowns. And as long as you're not 75 years old and you need your money, it's fine. I'm 51. If we get a two to three year drawdown, it's going to help the average cost until I'm 59 to 65. My son's a freshman in college. I, I think the S&P is going to be 6000 That's why it, during the pandemic, I went from $500 a month to 1000 a month for his 529 because I started when it was five versus one. So I just try and tell you real life things I'm doing that I think will benefit me, that hopefully could benefit you. And I'm not a gazillionaire. I live in Short Hills. There are guys that run five, ten $10 billion for funds that think they're really smart and they've never given me one idea ever <laughs> in the stock market. And uh, they have $10 million homes. I don't. My house is, might be a $2 million house. And I have one son. We have two cars. I got my dog. I do races. I'm the, the most um, replicatable person out there for someone who wants to do what I do. You know, it's hard. Guys that are running billion-dollar funds and firms and, make, and they're worth $100, $200, $300 million. It's hard to do what they do because it's hard to relate. I'm a pretty relatable guy. And maybe I could be worth more and do more. But... I choose to work out of short hills and come to the city to do Fox business. I choose to coach youth sports and be in the rec commission. And I didn't run for mayor. They wanted me to do that. I'm not doing it. And, and enjoy myself because as we see what I learned today from being online at a funeral with a family that's worth millions, that depression and happiness isn't quanti it's not quanti quantifiable by money. It's by waking up every day with a smile on your face and be excited about the day. That is the definition of happiness. It's not the size of your house, what kind of car you drive, and your bankroll. It's are you excited about the day, and how are your relationships? And that, that's how I think we have to leave everybody. It's 3.30 already, and they have to trade the close, so do I. Okay, so guys, come back to with us next week, 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, where Scott is going to tell us, because I'm, I'm actually annoyed at Scott right now because – he didn't tell me that they asked him to be mayor, which sounds like a great TV show, Trader Turned Mayor. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do yeah, it. Yeah, Scott. I, so I many problems so. in this town, I would be abused. And I, I'm like a political action committee. I, I come in, I built a field, I built a turf field at the library. I closed on the street during the pandemic for the restaurants and the business. I'm trying to turf the back of the high school. I got different youth sports. I can't be worried about the other 90,000 things that the town complains about. I'm just not a sounding board. You know, I'm too happy of a guy and, and I just want to help where I think I could add value and, 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 and not be sitting there where I'm like, you know, and, and anyway, most people in town don't care about what happens. All they want to do is complain. I'm just going to help where I think that it makes a real difference. Yeah, Scott, it sounds like, um, a town with $10 million homes, you don't want to be mayor because when those people have a problem, <laughs> they're going to call you at two in the morning looking for answers. So guys, again, thank you for joining us. We're going to be back next week, 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure you show up, comment, say hi. Monica is giving us the, the magic emojis. So guys, th again, thanks for coming. Wait, we're, 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 we're taking the Super Bowl, even though you, okay. you, guys were, you guys were horrendous on your Baltimore pick. Okay, yeah, guys, you, 
you really screwed us. So guys, I'll give you the official T3 live forecast for the Super Bowl. Um, it's so the Chiefs are going to win 27 20. I guarantee it. Really? Guarantee it. I guarantee it. I'm, you know the I'm guarantee that, thing. I I guarantee the Chiefs are gonna win. The, the Chiefs are gonna win twenty seven twenty. The fix is in. I know it. All right. I can. So what, what's the spread too? So don't, it might not be twenty seven twenty. So what Mike is saying is just take the Chiefs and take the points. I'm. I'm I, I'll giving, give you no gambling. I'll give no you gambling a, advice. No gambling. I'll give advice. you a parlay. I think you should um you should do you know Kelsey having one touchdown, and McCaffrey having a touchdown. And you know you'll get some odds having both work out. Like that's a good parlay, I think. So that, that that's all I'll give you. And okay, uh, I'm, I'm gonna recommend no gambling. So, but guys, let, let us know in the comments who's gonna win the Super Bowl. Is it is it gonna be the Chiefs or the 49ers? Who do you think Tell is gonna come on at the at a halftime? That could happen. You know, the, 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 there's a I think Elon Musk floated a theory that the the most entertaining outcome is the most likely. And to me, the most entertaining outcome is is Taylor Swift somehow being her and Ter Travis Kelsey being a big spectacle on the stage, kissing, proposing with the ring. I heard that's one too. It's, it's she, he, <laughs> someone said this whole fairy tale. Like, all right, so where are we a year from now? You know, Taylor Swift gets engaged and married as a kid, and the S and P's at six thousand. Well, all right, I know. <laughs> I don't know how one thing correlates to another, but. That could happen too. Oh, well, look at NYCB. NYCB is actually, you know, there. That might not be a zero. There's a lot of options going on there. Anyway, um, okay, okay, guys, just, a, a whole, whole ton of you just joined Power Play, so we we really really appreciate it. Oh yeah. So again, yeah, tons of people joining. So guys, again, t3live.com/power. Um, this might be the biggest, like um value in the, in the stock market because this the, these are the the plays i'm usually there's a, sometimes i'm not I'm, I, I get upset I'm like why was i in that power play i'm usually in probably 75 percent, 80 percent of the power plays because why wouldn't i be if they're a power play and um, everything else could be cash flow massaging take the trade red to green green to red tier this tier that but power plays are really good setups and there aren't always great power plays out there Sometimes there are, sometimes they're not. And we're getting to a point in the market where we are getting a little frothy S&P 5000. So if you've had a lot of great power plays, which we've had since November, you know, just if you join today, <laughs> the next three months might have a little less. So we're not guaranteeing you 25 power plays in the next three months. It depends on the market. We're not going to manufacture things to give you action. That's not what the stock market is. It's calculated plays that give you a great position to make money and if that doesn't work you're out and then we figure that out if the market's not conducive for it we're not going to do it but when it's conducive and it's there boom we're going to try and strike when the iron's hot and that's it we got to trade now go back have a great super bowl if you're going to eat wings and onion rings and steak sandwiches just make sure you sweat a little bit in the early morning go for a nice run or jog i'm going to be doing like a, a 15 mile trail run with a bunch of guys on sunday morning so this way, when I'm watching the game, there's no guilt. That's part of my process. You know, that's the weekend process. I appreciate you guys. Thanks again. Okay, Scott, thank you very much. Always, always a pleasure having you here. And I will let Scott go. Scott has 29 minutes to make some more money before the weekend. <laughs> okay, you Scott, know, I will. we will talk soon. Sounds good. Later, Mikey. All right, bye, Scott. Okay, guys, again, I can't encourage you enough, guys. 